All right, so we're in Psalm 62. Um, the main verse, it, it's a great chapter as far as just having strength and where David's strength came from. Uh, we know he went, through, he went through a lot of trials and tribulations throughout his life. Um, the main verse I want to look at is, is number 7. If you look in Psalm 62 in verse number 7, it says, In God is my salvation and my glory, the rock of my strength. The rock of my strength and my refuge is in God. So tonight I'm going to be talking about strength, just having strength, being strong in the Christian life. Um, you know, the Christian life, it's, it's not a bed of roses, as, as a lot of people would have you to think. Um, you know, we're going to face trials and tribulations in our life. We're going to go through hard times. Um, we need to have the strength to be able to get through those those things. Today, there, there's an agenda to create a weak-minded and effeminate man today. And, um, you know, we ought not to be that way as Christians. Um, let's face it, men are being raised to be weak today, even, even among Christians. Um, we need to stand up and be strong as Christians. You know, men, women, and children. It's, it's not just men. The Bible is a, is a history book. Um, and the entire Bible speaks of men, women, and children who did amazing things and, and had strength in adversity. You know, we see Jacob. Jacob was, was strong physically, and it is a virtue to be strong physically. But the Bible is mainly talking about an inner strength. So we see Jacob. He was a strong man. He rolled the stone from the well when it normally it took, it took multiple men to lift the stone from the well. Um, he wrestled with God, you know, to the point that, you know, he, he forced God to bless him. You know, he said, I wouldn't let go until you, I won't let go until you bless me. And uh, he ended up winning that, that wrestling match. You know, so we see that, that Jacob was strong. David, he, he slayed the champion of uh, the Philistines, Goliath, who was nine and a half feet tall. You know, so he... He fought against lions and, and bears, and, I mean, he, he just did many things, and, and we could tell that he was a strong man. You know, those are, those are two men in the Bible that, are, that were strong. And then we also, we see Esther, right, who stood up against the king. Even though her life was on the line, she could be put to death, and, and she, she stood up and said, if I perish, I perish. You know, so we see many instances in the Bible of uh, strong Christians. So tonight I'm going to be touching on the subject of strength. You know, having strength in, in the Christian life. What makes us strong? Um, where does that strength come from? You know, and um, just how to become strong in the Christian life. So my first point that I, that I want to bring up tonight is that tribulation makes us strong. Tribulation makes us strong. You know, uh, turn your Bible to Daniel 3. So going through tribulation is, is actually a good thing. This is not a bad thing when you go through hard times in your life. So turn to Daniel 3. Um, it's, a, it's a famous story in the Bible. We, we go over these stories, and I think sometimes we have a tendency to just read over these and not actually put ourselves in, these, in, in the shoes of these men. Um, and we actually forget that these were real people that actually went through hard times in their life. Um, if you look down at, at uh, we'll just start in, in verse 14 of Daniel 3. So it says, Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, do not ye serve my, do not ye, do not ye serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? Now if ye be ready, that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the image which I have made. Well, but if you worship it not, you shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? So picture this. You have been basically kidnapped from your home as a youth. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were brought into um, Babylon against their will, okay? It's hard for us to picture that, but 
imagine, you know, you're living your life, you're living, living your life, a daily life, and um, everything's going good, and then you get taken out of that comfort zone, and you get basically put into a strange place, put into a place that, you know, you don't know how to speak the language, you just, you're just trying to get by day to day, and, you know, you take a stand for God, you don't want to worship the image. And so basically, you have this, you have this option is to worship or be cast into a fire, okay? And I think most Christians would worship, but in their heart, serve God, worship God, and, and just say, you know what, I'm just going to go through the motions. It seems like these were the only men that, that stood up at the time. And, you know, I don't know about you, but being, being burned alive isn't necessarily at the top of the list as far as ways to die for me. Um, you know, they could have easily just bowed to the image and in their heart worship God, but that's not what we see. We see that they took a stand. So if you look in verse 16, it says, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said unto the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. Now, I love that response. They, they say, we're not careful to answer thee. We're, we don't care what you think. We're, we're, we're just not even going to be careful in our response. You know, what a, what a great response that is. And, and that, that takes strength right there, to stand up to the king when it looks like nobody else was. And look down at verse 17. It says, If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of the hand, out of thine hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. So they basically said, look, our, our God can deliver us from this tribulation. Our God can get us out of this, this trial. But you know what? If it's his will that I go through this situation and it's his will, um, then so be it. You know, and I'm willing to face that. Look, we're, we go through hard times, but we're not necessarily being faced with a, a furnace of fire. I, I doubt we ever will, you know. Um, and look down, at, uh, look down at verse number 19. This is, this is Nebuchadnezzar's response. He says, Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury, and the form of his visage was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace one seven times more than it want to be heated. So basically, this furnace had a limit. It was only supposed to be heated to a certain point, and uh, Nebuchadnezzar, he, he got so angry at their response that he just, he just said, crank it up all the way. And he commanded the most mighty men that were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and cast them into the burning, fiery furnace. Then these men were bound their coats, their hosen, and their hats, and their garments, and were cast into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. And we know that, you know, this is an Old Testament appearing of the Son of God. It says there was like unto one um, that w that was like unto the Son of God that was walking with them. So we saw that God stepped in and ended up saving them. So he actually, you know, there, when they first said, you know, if our God, um, he'll be able to deliver us. And he did. He ended up delivering them instead of letting them die in the fire. And, and you know, that, that's, a, that's, that's an extreme example of tribulation. Okay, we're, you know, things that we face and, you know, I'm not saying that when we go through something, it's not a big deal to us because sometimes you're in the middle of something, it feels like you're about to get thrown into a fire, you know, but this is, this is a real fire with real heat, you know, and you're facing death. But these men stood up to it. You know, they, they had the courage, they had the strength to stand up and said, you know, we're not going to bow down to the image, even to the point of death. You know, so, look, if these men could handle being thrown into a fire we can handle a door being slammed in our face. You know, that, that's, those are our worst days, right? We get a door slammed in our face. Um, you know, we're moving to a good church. You know, these are, these are big things in people's lives. Um, you know, but look, if everything just went great in your life, if everything just went good in your life, wouldn't you eventually just probably be a jerk? If everything just went, went great for your life, all the way from when you were a kid to now and everything went perfect, you know, going through hard times is what builds character. It's, it's, what, it's what makes us who we are. You know, all these things that we've been through. Um, turn, 
Turn to Ezekiel 24. Hard times, it's tribulation in our life. It's, it's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. So if you're there in Ezekiel 24, that, now this, this is a bad situation Ezekiel finds himself in. And I, I'm just going to, uh, let's just look at verse 18. So in Ezekiel 24, verse 18, it says, So I spake unto the people in the morning, and at even my wife died, and I did in the morning as I was commanded. This is, this is something, you know, that this is a horrible thing. Someone dies, a loved one dies in your life. But we, even, even despite something bad like that happening, we should still wake up in the morning and serve the Lord. Wake up in the, in the morning and do as we're, we're commanded. You know, and, and um, we can treat even small problems this way. We go through something, we, can, we still got tomorrow. We, we still got another day to uh, renew our strength and, and uh, build ourselves back up. You know, and... Um, you know, he, he was showing that, you know, even, even despite his wife dying, we can, we can still serve the Lord. You know, we, we might be pushed to our limit, you know, but God's only going to tempt you as far as you're able to handle. He's going to push you to that limit, though. If you think about it, when you get strong, when you're lifting weights, you want to increase the weight each time. You want to put a little more weight on each time. It's the same thing with, with going through something hard. To get strong you got to push it to that limit, and God's going to push you to that limit, but it's, it's for your own good. It's, it's to make you stronger in the long run. And sometimes we're going through stuff, and it's just like, man, I don't know. I can't handle it. It's, this is, uh, you know, but the Bible says that God won't push you past that limit that you're able to handle. In 1 Corinthians 10, 13, it says, There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is to com common to man, but God is faithful. Who will, who will not suffer you to be tempted above you are able, but will with temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. You know, and tempted, it, it just means to be tried. You know, so he's not going to try you above that you're able to handle. And sometimes you think, man, well, he must think I could handle a lot. You know, so, but it's good. It's good. Tribulation is good. It makes us strong. It, they're, they're blessings. They're blessings in our life. You know, Paul rejoiced when he went through hard times. Deuteronomy 4 says, When thou art in tribulation, and all these things are come upon thee, even in the latter days, if thou turn to the Lord thy God, and shall be obedient unto his voice, for the Lord thy God is a merciful God, he will not forsake thee, neither destroy thee, nor forget the covenant of thy fathers, which he swear unto them. So, going through tribulation is good. It, it it builds us up. It is a tool that God uses to strengthen us. How else is he going to strengthen us? How else is he going to make us grow stronger? It's his, it's his only mechanism. It's the only tool that he has to, to make us stronger. It's, it's to put you through um, hard times, but it's, it's for your own good. It's for our own benefit as Christians. You know, look, the way I look at it is, is whatever has happened in, in my life, it, it was just God's plan. You know, no matter what I go through, um, as long as it's not chastisement, you know, chastisement is it's a whole different thing. God puts us through, through trials. The Bible says, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing has happened. You know, it says strange, meaning don't be surprised. Don't be surprised. Say, what, what is going on? Why am I going through this? Don't be surprised. It's, it's, it's God just trying your faith. You know, I'm glad that I went through hard times. Otherwise, you know, I, I, could get, I could get this attitude of not understanding what someone else is going through. You know, if you're somebody that never went through anything, how, how can you offer advice or, or offer help to someone who, who has, right? Whether it's financial struggles or whatever, you know, it, it, you, can, you can lend your ear to somebody that's going through something at that time because you've been there, you've been through it. You know, so, but all things work together for good to them that love God. We know that. So even though you're going through hard things or something's um, in your life that's, that's pushing you, uh, you know, causing you to get stronger, the tribulation in your life, we know that eventually all those things, they work together for good to them that love God. 
The Bible says, it is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn thy statutes. You know, those are the times that we actually meditate on God's word. We turn to God's word when we're going through something hard. <clears throat> you know, in the tribulation also, it, it also causes patience, right? Because you're, you're forced to wait on God. You're forced to wait. You ask, sometimes you're going through something and you ask God, Lord, deliver me out of this. Lord, help me. And you might not get the answer right away. He might just be causing you to wait. That way, you know, your patience can be tried. And you, you end up getting, getting patience through that. You know, and you probably ask, you know, why do I have to go through hard times? You know, why does God give us tribulation? But really, it's, it's, his, it's his way of strengthening you. It's his way of causing you to become stronger in the Christian life. <clears throat> Let's take another look at a story of tribulation in the Bible. Turn to Genesis 38. Genesis 38. And this is the story of Joseph. Um, you know, when his brothers got jealous of him because he had a colorful coat and, his, and Jacob was favoring him. He kind of had favor on him and the brothers got jealous and end up selling him into slavery. But let, let's take a look at, this, at the story. Genesis 38 in verse number 3. Genesis 38 in verse number 3. So we know the story. I'll just, I'll just kind of give the back, a back story on it real quick. Joseph, um, basically his brothers were jealous of him because the father favored him. And they plotted to kill him. But the, one of the brothers said, no, let's just, let's just sell him into slavery. Let's you know, make some money off of him. And so they sold him. Uh, to the Egyptians, and you know, and then he ended up uh, he ended up being in Potiphar's house and and going into prison and all that. But in Genesis thirty eight three, it says, "And his master saw that the Lord was with him, and the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. And Joseph found grace in his sight, and he served him and made him overseer over his house." and all that he had put into his hand. So despite being sold into slavery, despite, you know, all the, all the hard times that he went through, the Lord was with him during those hard times, and then the Lord also made him to prosper in those hard times. And so, you know, even, even when we're going through something, just remember the Lord, the Lord's with you, he's there, he's gonna see you through this, and, you know, you're gonna find grace in his sight. And, and he's going to cause you to prosper even in the midst of, of tribulation or a hard time. Um, and then, of course, we, we see more um, of Joseph's life and, and just more hard times, more tribulation. He was even falsely accused um, of lying with Potiphar's wife and cast into prison, prison. But he kept pushing. He kept trusting in God and just, just kept keeping the commandments and, and having faith that God... Um, would keep his life, you know, and, and talk about nothing going right in your life. You know what I mean? You, you get sold into slavery, you get falsely accused, you end up in prison. But look in uh, verse 21, Genesis 38. It says, but the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. And the keeper of the prison committed Joseph's hand all the prisoners that were in the prison, and whatsoever they did there, he was the doer of it. The keeper of the prison looked not to anything that was under his hand because the Lord was with him, and that which he did, the Lord made it to prosper. So it seems like no matter where Joseph is, no matter what's happening to him, the Lord's with him and the Lord's keeping him. The, you know, so it could just be very encouraging, this story right here. I believe it, it's a very encouraging story for when we're going through something. We're... I doubt we're going to go through what he went through, but the main point of the story is that he just, the Lord, the Lord kept him in his hand the whole time. The Lord was with him the whole time. <clears throat> and, and then we see the famous verse in Genesis 50, uh, 20. You don't have to turn there. I'll just read it for you. It says, but as for you, he's, it's Joseph talking to his brothers after they reunite. He says, but as for you, you thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good to bring to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. So when you're going through tribulation, when you're going through hard times, just remember, the Lord can use those bad times for good, right? You know, all things work together for good to them that love God. So no matter what we go through, we can, we can, we can 
just realize that, you know, God can cause that bad situation to turn into a good situation. <clears throat> you know, the, the Lord has our lives in his hands. He, he holds our lives in his hands. And he can blow on it like dust, and our whole life can, can just fall apart. But he also has the power to turn a bad situation into a good situation. Um, so tribulation is a good thing. Going through tribulation, it's, it's not a bad thing. You know, we, we feel like it is at the time, but we need to realize the, the greater scheme of things that, you know, it's good that I've been afflicted, you know, and we have to loosen our grip of things of this world anyways. You know, if you, if you hold on too tightly and things, things don't work out, it could, it could cause you to stumble or fall. We need to loosen our grip on the things of this world and realize that, you know, it, it's in God's hands. You know, they, they could take my house, they could take my cars, they could take my money. Um, I'm still going to serve the Lord. And, you know, those things don't make me happy anyways, right? <clears throat> I'm not serving the Lord on the count of those things. You know, happy, happiness doesn't come from a, the circumstantial situation you find yourself in. That's, that's not what happiness comes from. Um, it's, it's not dictated by what's going on around you. You know, ha happiness is an inner sufficiency. It's, it's just having peace, um, knowing that, that God can take you through any situation that you find yourself in. You know, if your happiness is wrapped up in a someone, then you're only as happy as long as that person is there. If your happiness is wrapped up in a something, well, the Bible says that all these things shall pass away. You know, so we need to, we need to realize that going through tribulation is, is good for us, and, and we ought to be content, you know, and we don't have control over the outside. We have control over the inside, you know, and uh, turn to uh, Philippians 4. We know someone that went through tribulation, Paul, right? Paul went through a lot of tribulation. He went through hard times. But, you know, I find it interesting that not one time in the Bible do you hear Paul complaining about the prison he was in. He doesn't tell you how cold it was. He doesn't tell you what the food was like. He never talks about those things. You know, he never complained. Philippians 4, 11. If you look down at verse number 11. The Bible says, Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned... In whatsoever state I am, therewith to be content. I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound, to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. So Paul was content. I mean, we, we know everything he went through. But being in prison, he never complained about it. He was content. What, it didn't matter if you put him in prison. It didn't matter if he was doing great or not. He was still um, being strengthened through the Lord. That last verse, he says, I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me, right? So the tribulation, you know, when we're at our weakest, that's when we can be made strong. You know what I mean? And so 2 Corinthians 12 says, Therefore I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distress, for Christ's sake, for when I am weak, then am I strong. You know, so, so when you're at your lowest, it, it tends to be that you bounce back and you're stronger than ever. You know, when you're at your lowest, when you're going through something hard and you make it through that situation, you come out of it stronger. You know, uh, the Bible talks about being tried in a, in a fiery furnace, and, and when you come out, you're... Um, you're as pure as gold, you know. So these situations make us better. They make us stronger. Tribulation is a good thing in our life. Um, in Acts 16, if you want to turn to Acts 16, we see Paul and Silas in prison. And, you know, they're singing and they're rejoicing. They got thrown in prison. They're singing and they're rejoicing. I don't know many people that, that would do that today. But... It just shows their mindset, right? They're being persecuted for God, and they're willing to, they're happy about it. You know, they take pleasure in the reproaches. If you look at uh, verse 25, Acts 16, verse 25, it says, And at midnight Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. 
And suddenly there was a great earthquake so, the so that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors were open and everyone's bands were loosed. And of course, you know, they're singing praises and, and eventually we know that the jailkeeper ends up getting saved and his whole house, right, through this situation. So they took, they took a bad, uh, it was supposed to be a bad situation. They're in prison, they're going through this tribulation and they end up getting a man saved and his whole house, okay? His whole family got saved out of this situation. You know, tribulation in our lives is what makes us stronger. It makes us content. It pushes us to our limits of what we can handle, and in turn, it, it strengthens us. You know, because the next time we go through something difficult, we have the experience to look back on that situation and say, you know what, the Lord delivered me then, and he can do it now. All right, so tribulation is not a bad thing. It's actually a good thing in our life. Um, rejoice when you're going through it. You know, I know that's hard, but you'll come out stronger than you were going in. Uh, my second point that I want to make tonight is being spiritually strong. Spiritually strong. You know, men should not be weak and effeminate. You know, it's, it's a virtue to be physically strong. But the Bible is constantly hammering being strong within, spiritually strong. Um, you know, what does it mean to be spiritually strong? Turn to Deuteronomy 31.6. Deuteronomy 31.6. The Bible says, Be strong and of a good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them, for the Lord thy God he it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee nor forsake thee. That's one of my favorite verses right there. But the Bible's talking about just, just not fearing. You know, don't be afraid of man. Don't be afraid of what man can do to you. Um, we need to fear God, first, first of all. But the Bible is saying be strong and of a good courage. The Bible's constantly telling us to be strong. You know, we, we increase our strength spiritually by having faith that our lives are in the Lord's hands. And actually believing that, though. You know, not just, okay, we read these verses, but actually believing it. Believing that he has your life in his hands, and he knows what's best for you in the end. And he, he'll take care of you. You know, and, the, and that will cause your worry and your fear and your anxiety of whatever you're going through. It'll, it'll cause it to disappear when you just leave it in his hands, and you just let go of the will and just leave it in his hands and, and continue to serve him, right? You know... We need spiritual strength to fend off the spiritual attacks, right? There's a spiritual war going on whether we know it or like it. It doesn't matter. We're in it, and we need to have the spiritual strength to get through it or to just deal with it. Um, turn to Ephesians 6. <clears throat> Ephesians 6. You know, we are in this spiritual battle. It's a battle won not by hands, but by a spiritual strength. And a spiritual means with a spiritual weapon. In Ephesians 6, look at verse number 11. The Bible says, Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So we're fighting a spiritual battle. You know, we see it all the time when we're out soul winning. Um, I could think of just a time a few weeks ago where we, we show up, and not, and not within like 10 seconds, and here comes an ambulance, here comes a fire truck. All this stuff is going on. We're trying to give the gospel to this guy, but that distracts him. You know, it, it, we see it all the time, and, and uh, it truly is a spiritual battle. And it, it's hard to explain it unless you're, you're soul winning, and you really see it. That's when you really see it. So what, what are those, what, you know, what armor, what is this armor that he's talking about? What does it do? Look in verse number 13. The Bible says, Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate 
of righteousness. What is the breastplate of righteousness? You know, what does it protect? It protects your heart, right? Isn't that what a breastplate does? What does the Bible say about the heart? I'll just read these verses off. Psalm 66, 18 says, If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. So there it is. It's talking about the heart, the iniquity of the heart. Jeremiah 17, 9 says, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who could know it? Matthew 15 says, But those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart, and they defile the man. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, and blasphemies. You know, living a righteous life, it's the breastplate of righteousness, right? Living a, living a righteous life will protect our heart. Because even a, even a Christian's heart can wax cold. So what other, what other piece of armor do we need? Look at, look at verse number 15. The Bible says, In your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. So here's another important piece of armor to protect us in the spiritual war we find ourselves in. Going soul winning, having a love for the lost. That's what that verse is talking about. This is how we, you know, build this army to fight this spiritual battle. We need, we need more soldiers. Notice how it says feet shod with the gospel of peace. What do you use your feet to do? To walk. You know, it means go. It means, it means go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. It doesn't say sit at home and they'll come to you. You know, stand on a milk crate with a, mega, with, with a megaphone. You know, it means go, walk, take the gospel to them. So what else? It says, above all, taking the, field, the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. So the shield of faith is, is above all. That's the most important, important piece. It says above all. So what, what, is, what is that, the shield of faith? It, faith is, is believing God's word. It's just believing it, trusting it, and having the confidence in God's word and his prom promises. And, and know that, that we're on the winning side. You know, we're on the winning side. <clears throat> Imagine going to war knowing you're going to win. Imagine going to war knowing for sure, without a doubt, in your mind, I'm going to win this. You know, you, you almost would feel invincible, right? That's how we should feel. That's how we should feel. We're on the winning side. And the Bible says, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. So our weapon of choice is the Word of God. It's the Bible. So if we want to be spiritually strong, we're going to need every piece of this armor. If we're missing one piece, then we have a weak point. And that's, that's where the devil's going to attack. He's going to attack that weak point. So if you're missing one piece of this armor, he's going to attack it. You know, strength is courage, and fear is, is weakness. You know, we, fear is the opposite of strength. We need to be spiritually strong because so we're in a spiritual fight. <clears throat> Turn to Philippians 3. Philippians 3. You know, I, I, I'm glad we have Paul. You know, I'm glad we have Paul to tell us, you know, look, this is this. I've already been through it. And if I can do it, you can do it. I'm, I'm thankful for Paul. So Philippians 3, look in verse 10. The Bible says that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead, not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend, that for which also I am apprehended of, of Christ Jesus. And in verse 13 it says, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, and reaching forth unto those things which are before in verse 14, I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. So that, that's a great verse, and it's, encur it's an encouraging verse that, look, things happen to us, but we just got to move forward. Got to just forget about it. Just don't dwell on it. Just move forward. 
you know, spirit, spiritual strength is, is the ability to take a stand for what you believe and have fellowship in the sufferings of Jesus Christ. You know, and, and the ready, readiness within to be mocked and ridiculed and, and slandered and beaten, what, you know, even all the way up into death. We, we need to be spiritually strong to be able to handle those things, you know, and, and, and not regarding your personal shortcomings or things that have happened in your past or, or you know, things that you're going through now. We just got to keep moving forward at all costs. You know, if, if, if we aren't spiritually strong, how are we going to help somebody who's spiritually weak? You know, one of the brothers or sisters in Christ. Proverbs 24, 5 says, A wise man is strong, yea, a man of knowledge increaseth strength. Another, another aspect in the Bible that we see is we see the Spirit of the Lord coming upon men and women. You know, we see the Spirit of the Lord coming upon men. And no, the, the Spirit of the Lord doesn't mean you're flopping around on the ground like a fish, you know, or running around screaming or, you know, the Pentecostal stuff. You know, the Spirit of the Lord comes upon men and women in the Bible to do great things, to strengthen them, right? Go to, um, if, if you would, please turn to Isaiah 11. Isaiah 11. We're going we're gonna to take a look at the Spirit of the Lord. If, if we want to be spiritually strong, you know, what does that consist of? Isaiah 11, of course, this, this is a prophecy of, of the Messiah coming, um, eventually coming, and it's obviously talking about Jesus here. In Isaiah 11, if you're there, look down at verse number 11. Isaiah 11, 11, where the Bible says, and there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. So we see the spirit of the Lord consists of wisdom, understanding, counsel, might, knowledge, and the fear of God. So wisdom, wisdom is, is, is knowledge we gain from reading God's word and, and, and applying that knowledge. That's what wisdom is. So wisdom is, is taking information, knowing it, and then applying it. That's, that's what wisdom is. Understanding is the second, the second thing we see. Understanding is being able to comprehend God's word and having the ability to use it to make you know, a judgment call in a situation. Counsel is, is being able to give advice on a particular, you know, subject or, or situation. Um, it's to relay knowledge to somebody else uh, based on biblical principles. You know, that's what counsel is. Might, might is another um, aspect of the Spirit of the Lord. It, it says have, might is having the courage to stand for what you believe no matter what. You know, these are all, these are all things that make you stronger, right? Might understanding, these are all going to make you spiritually stronger in the Christian life. Knowledge is, is of course, it's, it's to know the instruction from God's word. And then the last one, which is the most important one, it just says the fear of God, having the fear of God. So having the fear of God is, is to ultimately know that, that God has your life in his hands. Philippians 4 says, 4, 6 says, be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known unto God, and the peace of God, which path, passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So, you know, having an inner peace is, is to be spiritually uh, strong. Uh, a spirit that can't be shaken. A spirit that, that can't be moved by situations that you're going through. You know, I, I don't know about you guys, but I, I want to be used by God, you know, more than anybody who's ever lived on this earth. I'll probably never realize that ambition, but, you know, it's, it, it's something that I strive. Um, but we need to be spiritually strong to achieve great things in this Christian life. Uh, 1 John 2, uh, 14 says, I have written unto you, fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you, young men, because ye are strong. And the word of God abideth in you, and ye have overcome the wicked one. You know, Jesus Christ, 
Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You know, what are, what, what's the worst that could happen to us? We die and go to heaven, right? We, we worry about these things going on in our lives, but ultimately our end is, is a great end. You know, we, no matter what happens in this life, of course we want to be successful and have, you know, and, and, and have good lives, but realize that we need to be spiritually strong to get through these things. We go through weak moments in our lives, but guess what? We've overcome the wicked one through salvation. So what's the worst that could happen? You know, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And uh, turn, turn to 2 Timothy 1.7. Actually, I'm sorry. Turn to Hebrews 11. I'll just read 2 Timothy 1.7. Turn to Hebrews 11. 2 Timothy 1.7 says, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. You know, the, the spirit, being spiritually strong is not having the spirit of fear. You know, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Hebrews 11.32 So Hebrews 11, it's the faith chapter. You know, everybody calls it, it's the, it's the faith chapter. And these, I'm going to read three verses here. If you want to look down at verse 32. It says, and what shall, I, what shall I more say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and of Barak and of Samson and of Jephthah and David also and Samuel and of the prophets who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouth of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, waxed valiant in fight, turned to flight the armies of the alien. You know, what, what made these men strong? What made these men strong? You know, what, what made Paul strong as he sat in a prison, not knowing what was going to come next, not knowing... Um, whether they were going to put him to death or not. You know, what made Paul strong? You know, what, what made Stephen strong? You know, as, what made him spiritually strong as, as he was about to get stoned? You know, and, and, he, and he cried out to the Lord and, and basically said, you know, forgive them, you know, as he was being stoned. You know, what, what about John? What made John spiritually strong as they exiled him to the Isle of, of Patmos? You know, away from family and friends. Um, you know, this world, is, it's full of tears and, and suffering and heartache, you know, and, and unhappiness and, and war and riot and all these, all these things. But, you know, we need to be spiritually strong in this Christian life or we're just not going to last. We need to be spiritually strong. <clears throat> so for my, my final point, so let's just recap. Tribulation is not a bad thing when you're going through something hard. It's, it's for your own good. It's, it's to make us stronger. It's to make us better. Okay? It's, um, it, it might seem tough at the time that we're going through it, but just realize God will see you through it, and you will become stronger um, by the end of that. And then our, um, the second point was to be spiritually strong, to not be weak, to be able to get through hard times. We are at a spiritual battle, and, you know, we need to put on the whole armor of God. Um, that way we can handle the attacks and not just crumble and fall out of the Christian life. So, and then for my, my third and final point here, where does, where does our strength come from? Where does our strength come from? So, the Lord God is literally the source of our strength. Literally. In Isaiah 41.10, the Bible says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. And I'm just going to read a couple of verses. The Bible says in Psalm 18.32, It is God that girdeth me with strength, and maketh my way perfect. Psalm 28.7 says, The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him, and I am helped. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoiceth, and with my song I will praise him. Psalm 29, 11 says, The Lord will give strength unto his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. Psalm 37, 39 says, But the salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. He is their strength 
in the time of trouble. You know, God has the power to give you strength. He has the power to give you strength. That inner strength to keep going, even when you feel like you're at your wit's end, He has that strength. Even if you feel like you're all out of gas and you want to give up, God can step in and give you that little boost that you need to keep pushing through. We see it over and over in the Bible. You know, the Bible says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. Um, he restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in paths of righteousness for my name's sake. It's constantly he, he. You know, David obviously knew where that source of strength came from. He never said I. You know, I leadeth me beside still waters. That'd be weird anyways. But he says, he leadeth me beside the still waters. He's constantly giving credit that God is the one that, that gives us strength. <clears throat> you know, and then, of course, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, right? You know, even when we're at our lowest times, um, even, even unto death, we, we, we might die. The Lord is there to restore our strength and to build us up that we could stand in that evil day. The Lord, the Lord is the source of our strength. Isaiah 40, 31 says, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with, as wings, uh, with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. You know, sometimes we, we got to wait on the Lord to deliver us from whatever we're going through. Um, you know, if you're, a, if you're an impatient person, you might try to take those things into your own hands, and that's always a bad thing. It's, it's not going to end well. If you try to, and we do that, it's, it's a natural tendency to just want to take something into our own hands and deal, deal with it our own way. But sometimes we just have to wait on the Lord to see us through um, and just to give us that strength to get through the situation. Uh, those that wait on the Lord, you know, grow stronger in exercising patience and that, you know, God will come through. And in turn, our faith gets strengthened. We, grow, we go, grow stronger in faith. Um, you know, so our, our church, it's a small group. Our church is a small group. You know, but God can take small groups. Matter of fact, he does it in the Bible all the time. It, it would, we'd be here for another hour just to tell about all the stories how God takes a small group or a, or a small man or a weak man and uses him um, let, let's look at one instance of that. Turn to Judges 6. Judges 6. It's definitely one of my favorite stories in the Bible. Gideon. <clears throat> Gideon and all the exploits that he did. Let's look, uh, turn, turn to Judges 6 and look at verse 13. So God, God can use a small group to do mighty works. Look at Judges 6 and verse number 13. I'll begin reading. The Bible says, And Gideon said unto him, O oh my Lord, if the, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befallen us? And where be all his miracles, which our fathers told us of, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord hath forsaken us and delivered us into the hand, hands of the Midianites. And the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in this thy might, that thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have not I sent thee? And then look in, in verse 15. And he said unto them, O oh my Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is poor in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. So right away we see that, that Gideon came from humble beginnings. He's, he's saying, you know, who am I? How are you going to use me? Am I not the least? He comes from a poor family, um, you know, and, and, and he's saying, I'm the least in my father's house. I'm, you know, and, and so I'm assuming he had brothers or sisters, but he considered himself the least out of, out of everyone in his house. And, the, and look at verse number, uh, you know what, is that, I think it's, it's uh, chapter 7. Turn to chapter 7, Judges. Turn there myself. I think it's Judges 7, verse 7.
Yeah, look at look at um uh, look at yeah, look at verse number seven. <clears throat> Judges chapter seven, verse number seven. It says, And the Lord said unto Gideon, so we're just fast forwarding. So so Gideon was saying, I'm the least, least in my father's house. You know, why would you even use me? I come from a poor family. But look at Judges 7 and verse number 7. It says, And the Lord said unto Gideon, By the 300 men that lapped will I save you, and deliver the Midianites into thine hand, and let all the other people go, every man unto his place. So, so not only is, is Gideon the least in his house, he's, he's from a poor family, and, you know, but the angel of the Lord will not only use Gideon to rise up and defeat the Midianites, but he's, he's planning on doing it with only 300 people. Okay, and, and then obviously we know the rest of the story. Gideon goes on to do many great exploits with only 300 men. So this is just an instance that God was able to strengthen these men supernaturally to be able to defeat the Midianites and, you know, do all these great works. Um, you know, God uses, uses small groups to do mighty and great works. So he can use us the same way, and he does use us. You know, we might look and say, oh, this is just a small group. Look at all the souls that were won last year. You know, so far this year, we're out knocking doors, we're winning people to the Lord, and we're a small group. But don't let that discourage you because I'm here to tell you that God constantly is using small groups to do great things. <clears throat> Psalm 147.10 says, He delighteth not in the strength of the horse. He take pleasure, he take, taketh not pleasure in the legs of man. You know why God uses small groups? Because he wants the glory. Because if we were this big, massive group, or Gideon had this big, massive army, would they really give God the glory? Or would they say, look at what we did, or look at what that massive army did. God wants the glory. He doesn't delight in the legs of man. He wants the glory for those mighty works, and that's why he uses small groups to do great things. Genesis 49, 24 says, But his bow abode in strength, and the arms of his hands were made strong by the hands of the mighty God of Jacob. You know, so we're strengthened by the Lord. The Lord is the source of our strength. He's the one that can give you that strength when you need it to fight whatever battle is in front of you. Psalm 44.3 says, For they got not the land in possession by their own sword, neither did their own arm save them. Right? God wants all the glory. He doesn't want man taking credit for the things that he did. Right? Turn to... Uh, Turn to Luke 180. Luke 180. So we see uh, John the Baptist, right? So he was, he was regarded as the, the greatest man that ever lived, ever born of a woman. You know, what, what made John the Baptist so strong? You know, how, how did he get his strength? In Luke 180, the Bible says, And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit and was in the deserts. Till the day of his showing unto Israel. You know, where did, he, where did he get strong? He grew strong in the desert with God, alone. He was alone. Look, sometimes, sometimes we just need to get alone. Sometimes we just need to, we're, we live in this, in this society where it's just constant. TV, radio, just, you know, social media, all this stuff. Sometimes we just need to get alone with God, and that's when you're going to hit those spiritual mountaintops. You know, when you're alone. Obviously, being in a group, we, we strengthen each other as well. But sometimes you just got to get alone with God, like John in the desert. He was alone with God, and the Bible says he waxed strong in spirit. You know, even, even Jesus, Matthew 11, 7, I'll just read it. The Bible says, And as they departed, Jesus began to say unto the multitude concerning John, What went ye out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken with the wind? But what went ye out for to see, a man clothed in soft raiment? Behold, they that wear soft clothing are in king's houses. So Jesus is describing John. He's obviously not a weak man. You know, he's, he's, the way he's, he's describing him is that he's kind of a rough guy. He's probably, you know, I mean, he's out living in the wilderness. 
you know, he's, he's alone with God. He's, he's in the desert waxing strong with the Lord and gaining strength. Look, there, there's going to be a time in your life where you may be alone, you know, and, and we need to have that strength from the Lord when we're by ourselves as well. You know, obviously we, we strengthen each other, but there may come a day where you're alone and you need to be able to get that strength from God and realize that God will give you that strength even when you are alone. Even, even Jesus went away. He went up to the mountain to pray. He, he got away from the multitude. Matthew 14, 23 says, And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. So we see that even getting alone is what, you know, it will strengthen us with God. Sometimes we just got to get by ourselves, get with the Bible, get with the Word of God, get alone with it and, and, and read it by yourself sometimes. So, so in conclusion, we know that tribulation is, is not a bad thing after looking at the Bible, after looking at all these things that these men and women and children went through. Um, we know that tribulation actually is God's mechanism to strengthen us and to build us up, and it's what he uses. So next time you find yourself going through something hard, don't get discouraged. Don't get upset. Just, just keep pushing forward. Rejoice because when you come out, you'll be stronger. We also know that, you know, putting on the whole armor of God and, and being spiritually strong will help us to withstand in the Christian life and, and to be able to withstand the spiritual attacks that come your way. And lastly, we know where the source of our strength comes from. It comes from the Lord. And God is the one that when you feel like you're all out of gas and you just can't push forward anymore, just Ask God and he'll give you that strength. He is the source of the strength. And so, in conclusion, you know, we just need to realize that this Christian life, it's like I said in the beginning, it's not a bed of roses. You know, none of the men in here preached the prosperity gospel. Paul was telling us about all the tribulations he went through. Most of this book is just tribulation. You know, and, and we know that tribulation worketh patience, and patience, experience, and experience hope. Um, so let's pray.